everybody, and welcome to Building Bridges, Discovering Your Path to Peace. I'm very pleased and honored to uh, have a special guest on today, who is also a dear friend of mine, Vishwajit Goshal. He is the Director of Projects at um, Prayas Jack Society in New Delhi, India. And I'm your host, Maxine Silva. Welcome, Vishwa. Yeah, welcome. It's my honor, in fact, to be here at uh, the platform of Building Bridges. So today I'm, today I'm carrying this impression and feeling in me that it's all about one family you are talking about. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I just want our, our viewers to know that I was a volunteer at Prayas yes. for a number of yes, years, yes, yes. and it was through your efforts that got me there and for which I'm yes. really grateful. <laughs> So kind of you, so kind of you. Aha, uh -huh. and also I do want to acknowledge and pay homage to Mr. Amud Kant. He is the founder and general secretary of Prayas, uh, Jack yeah. Society. And now yes, I, yes. talking to you this morning, now I understand that Prayas has been in existence for 32 years. Yeah? 32 years, yes, yes. Marvelous, marvelous. Yes. Okay, well, uh, um, Vishwa, I would like you to tell everybody what it is that Prayas does. Yeah, Prayas, uh, in fact, it's uh, uh, in English, it means an endeavor. And uh, when this organization came into existence, at that point of time, there was no such structured mechanism, the protective mechanism for the large number of vulnerable children, for the street children in the country. So, though the act was there, the Jibrine Justice Care and Protection of Children Act was there, the National Policy on Children was there, but there was no such structured mechanism was in place. And uh, the thing uh, is all they are missing and uh, uh, not many missing, uh, you can say, lost and found children was there. And uh, the police stations used to provide them a meal. But where to go and where to where, where to spend their nights, it's always a question. So most of them, they were on streets, they were on roads every time, 24 hours, 365 days, they are on the roads. So the prayas, uh, when it was founded by Mr. Amorkan, there's a story behind it. A massive fire took place uh, in the northwestern part of our Delhi, known as Jagi Puri in 1986-87 in fact and this particular incident has triggered the emotion in Mr. Kunt and he, he thought that uh, let's do something for the, for the children who are on the streets. So this particular incident, this particular incident has, uh, has played and acted as a catalyst you may say and it is because of this fire and it is because of this incident which is still uh, very much fresh in our mind and I believe that definitely in the memory of Mr. Kant, in fact, who personally visited and started interacting with the kids and he took personal responsibility. He, he started this organization with 2025 children. He requested the Lieutenant Governor of uh, Delhi then to provide him with the one uh, quarter, one uh, LIG quarter, that is low income group quarter, which is uh, still with us. And as he was in police, so it's very natural that uh, some of his colleagues took, uh, uh, took active interest and uh, they supported his initiative and followed by his family members and friends. So all of you will be surprised that uh, what the services which we uh, providing to these children initially uh, has no support system, has no financial support system. So it's all uh, from our own pockets, it's all from our own salary mm -hmm. and uh, we yeah. were providing the services to these children for the next couple of years. I and, remember uh, Vishwa, you, you taking money out of your own pocket to help yes, these yes. kids. You, you've devoted your entire life yes, to pray yes. us. So, and so, uh, it's remarkable. Yeah, so kind of you. Thank you, thank you. So it's basically, it's not only it's not only about that. Uh, we are thankful, uh, rather than what I feel that uh, I'm grateful to these children as well, because despite of all the adversities, they are still smiling. Yeah, and uh, what we are doing, maybe we are doing a little bit in their life. We are trying our level best to to reform them, to strengthen their base, so that uh, they could lead a normal life. They could become a responsible yeah, citizen. Yeah. So now, how how now? Um, so you're you're providing food, shelter, education up to the age of 18 for those children yes, yes. who cannot yes, be yes. 
up to what yes, age? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we are providing, because as per the Act, we are providing the services, the, all you can say the holistic services, which includes their nutrition, their shelters, their clothing, their education, their co-curricular activities. We are taking care of their legal services. We are taking care of their medical services. Yes, till yes the and, time special, the and, and also special training to get to give them a job ultimately. That's not right? Of course, of course, the vocational training programs also we, we are running for. And the whole, the, the, the entire, uh, you can say, the services which uh, we are running for them, it all aims towards their uh, empowerment. And it is not that only the age of 18, we are providing support to these children. We are also providing support to the children beyond the age of 18, means under the program for aftercare program in the country. So till oh. 21 years of age, Till 21 uh, years of age, we are providing support to them in one way or other way. But till 18 years of age, they can have, uh, uh, they can live with us uh, in our homes and shelters as per the law. Okay, all right. So, um, <clears throat> with with the children, then um, there are the boys and girls are in, in separate dormitories. Uh, yes, right. Yes, yes. But how are you dealing with the issue of COVID-19 now with social distancing and masks yes. and whatever? How do you arrange that there? So, so, so it's in fact, actually, as I told you that we are running nearly 37 homes and shelters in the country. So each and every home and shelters, what we are doing that uh, once this particular, uh, once it has been declared as pandemic by World Health Organization and uh, followed by the nationwide lockdown announced by our Honorable Prime Minister. Then on, on 24th of March night, in fact, we decided that we will be coming to our homes and shelters and we will be staying into the guest house of the home and shelter to set an example for our frontline workers who are working directly with the children. Now, coming back to your question, that uh, uh, in each and every dormitories, uh, not more than four children maintaining the physical distance are allowed to live. So, for example, if you, if I'm talking about the Prayas Home for Girls, which has a sanctioned capacity of uh, 50 girls, so what we are doing is that we have syndicated them uh, in form uh, by maintaining the physical distance as well into various rooms. Now, they are no more living, all the girls are no more living in one dormitory rather than they have been segregated and placed into different rooms of the entire building. So that particular thing has been taken care of. And secondly, uh, and during the trying times, in fact, and still, we are not at all receiving any new child because even the Child Welfare Committee uh, uh, has 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 given us the direction that we are not going to allow any new child during this time. And in case if any child falls sick, we have created a, a separate isolation ward in our homes and shelters. So, so do you have, test? Do you test the children in each one? Uh, uh, testing is not taking place over here. In case if any child falls sick, so we have in-house the doctors over here. They are taking care of it. And uh, for the COVID test, we are largely dependent on the government hospitals. We are taking them to the government hospitals because uh, that, is, that is the first priority of us, uh, that if any child falls sick, we need to uh, conduct a COVID test for the child, first of all. And uh, have, have, uh, you, have you had any cases of COVID-19? No, 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 fortunately, we don't have even a single case in our homes and shelters okay. across India. So that's very much fortunate. We are, and uh, we are we are taking extreme precautions. We are, we, we oriented each and every colleague, each and every person, whether directly or indirectly associated with an organization, including our vendors as well. That uh, these are the protocols which we are following, and they are very much strictly in place. So I even see. even the children, yeah, even the children living in our homes and shelters, they are taking care of themselves. They are very much well aware about their tasks. Okay, okay. Well, you know what? I've heard from from some friends in India uh, who are living in Goa, and they had, I think, I don't even know if they had one case, maybe one case in that whole area. And so it seems uh, to to uh, what other people may think contradictory that India, with the lockdown, is 
maintaining um, the spread of the virus. Is that true in your experience, generally speaking, or no? It, India, India is maintaining that. India is maintaining, in fact. Now, uh, earlier when this lockdown was announced, people have shown a little bit of resentment that uh, how they are going to survive. Because I'm talking about the large number of people working in informal sectors, uh, in an unorganized sectors for them, sustenance became a question over a period of time. Yeah, And as you lived in Prayas, you, you are a family to us, you know Prayas, you visited along with us into various slums, into various communities and JJ clusters. It is very difficult to maintain the physical distancing because of the density of population existing in the country. And when you're talking about cities like Delhi, Bombay, Kolkata, it's, it's, it's really very difficult to maintain that level of physical distancing when yeah. you are living in slums, when you are living in JJ clusters. But still, I'm, uh, I must say that my fellow brothers, they understood the gravity of the situations. And now uh, the lockdown, it has been lifted. A lot of many services has been eased out. People have been asked to rejoin their services, to go back to their work. Yeah, so that uh, they may start earning because uh, livelihood was becoming an issue. And uh, the people were carrying this apprehension in their mind that maybe more people will die because of hunger rather than more than because of That's COVID. a good point. That's a very good point. Oh, my God, for sure. Well, you know what? Uh, a lot of the children that, that are at Prayas and living there uh, have come from the outlying areas. And when people come into the city and for work and they leave their children at the railway station, that's what I recall when I was there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, yeah. and, and, and which <laughs> is... I guess their hands are sort of tied. What do they do with their kids while they earn money to support themselves? And mm -hmm. I remember a few years <laughs> ago, while I was in Delhi and with you at Prayas. Yeah. Um, there was a little boy that had been picked up uh, at the railway station. And I remember it was a Saturday morning. I came yes, into yes. your office yeah, and yeah. there was this gorgeous little boy. And I was like mm. completely taken with him. So I asked you, can I give him a hug? Now, you know, a, a lot of physical contact public doesn't happen in India, India very often. And I always was a little wary of that, although I'm a hugger. What can I do? Uh, yes. So you said, yes, I could hug him. So I, I, I quietly walked over to that little boy. I didn't want to overwhelm him completely. And I put my arms around that child. And I kissed him on his cheek. And yes, then I remember that. Yeah. That little boy kissed me back. And yes, I was yes. like, oh my God. So I kissed him again. And he kissed me uh, back. And we were going more and more and more back and forth. And we took a picture of, of him with me. And I'm going to be showing that to people when we when we oh, air. That so? I, I oh. was so touched. I, that oh. little guy. And then um you you're also working with, with children who've committed crimes and whatever, from the smallest thing up to murder, even the rape of a young girl in, in Delhi, right? Yes, and yes, so yes. <laughs> I asked you to take me to the jail, and you mm. did. And I remember walking into this space, and there was a big hall, and there were a whole group of boys. I don't know, what are the yeah. ages there? 10 to 18 yeah. or something? 10 to, 10 to 16 years, in fact. 10 to? 16 years. Aha, uh -huh, okay, 10 to 15. And so... Um, uh, I asked you also, I said, to tell them in Hindi, because, you know, I know a few words, that's it, that yeah. I love them, that I'm their mother, their ama, and that yeah. they could be anything they want to be in, in their lives, that they have the power to do that. And you told them, and then the big smiles that came across their faces, and I was yes. so touched. Uh, and then you yeah. said to me, there's one more area I'm going to take you to, Maxine. And we went into this other space, and then there were a group of boys, not so many, a little older than the ones we, we had first seen. And I said, please, Vishwa, you say the same thing to them, and you did. Mm -hmm. And there was one boy, this tall, skinny kid, looked about 14. He started to cry. Well, oh my God. I remember that, yeah. You see, yes, so what did I do? The hugger that I am, I went and I hugged that boy. Yes. And you know what? As I'm holding this child, it was uh -huh. the holiest moment of my life, Ishwa, because 
I, I asked God to come through me into this kid and to help him because we, you had said the same thing in Hindi to them as we had done to the other children. And that boy cried in my arms. I cried with them. I don't think there was a dry eye in the place. I was so touched and I thought, I don't know who this boy is. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he came from, mm -hmm. but I can just imagine the horrible situations that he's had to face as a child. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, everybody should have this kind of experience because we're all human and we need to unite on that level of love and touch is so important. And I was yeah. thinking, you know, with the COVID-19, we were so social distancing. And I understand that because it, you know, to, to prevent the spread of the virus. virus. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, we need touch. We need yes. that human connection. Of and course. one of the greatest things that <clears throat> you do, my friend, is you connect, you touch, you reach out. And, uh, uh, you know, those children are so lucky to have you. No, no, so kind of you, the way you are thinking. Actually, what I realized after coming to Prayas and after I got this opportunity of working with the kids, that uh, that I'm very fortunate, in fact. And uh, God was God was kind to me. God is still kind to me. And I believe that God will be kind to me in future as well. The reason why I'm saying so, because uh, uh, what I observed, what I understood, that they are carrying a lot of pains. We, we love to talk about the about these children. We, we love to earn uh, doctorate on the life of these children by conducting not many research on their life on different parameters related to the life. But nobody is interested to connect themselves on soul to soul basis. So you will be happy to know that uh, we started a movement around three, four years back, long back. And uh, that movement name is called Connecting Soul Empowering Lives. Yeah. And the beauty of this movement is, if you if you recall our own relationships, yeah, that uh, I always used to treat you as a mother. In fact, I had given you the respect of a mother. And in my real life, I lost my mother last year on twentieth. Human, human, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she, she, yeah, she passed away. So, so the fact is that uh, what I understood, uh, only the thing which you can uh, do is if you could maintain uh, that level of consistency with these children, if you could create the feeling in them that yes, uh, this particular world is, is for you and you should not feel low because of your circumstances, because of your present crisis. You, you have all the powers in you to achieve whatever you wish to do in life. So that connectivity is very much needed and therefore it has been named Connecting Soul Empowering Lives. What we are doing that we are asking compassionate teachers, the professors, who are carrying that level of, you can say, attitude uh, to come forward and to connect themselves with one child. So it becomes a connection of one child, of one, of one mentor to mentee, you may say, because many of them, you, you yourself have seen and realized that they don't have parents, they don't have even a single person to call them their own person. And the biggest poverty in the world is loneliness. The biggest poverty in the world is loneliness. Yeah. And the biggest asset in the world, what I feel is, is your family. It's all about the feeling, in fact. It's all about Absolutely. whatever work you are doing. Wherever you go, wherever you go, if you succeed in creating a family for yourself, yeah. that is the biggest asset which you have achieved. That is your yeah. biggest achievement. Yeah. So what we, through this movement, what we are trying, that we are trying to create a family for them so that they may not go back into the same vulnerable situation they may not go back into the same vulnerable factors, in fact. And, and these factors should not enhance or increase their vulnerability so that uh, uh, they may get into the same level of exploitation from where they were coming. And that's, that's the dilemma. Already. That's a dilemma, isn't it, Vishwajit? Because, yes, yes, very you true. know, how can you return a child to an environment from which you needed to extricate them and bring them, to, you know, to a safe place? But at the same time, it's the family connection. How do you deal with that? That's so yeah. challenging. Yeah, it's very challenging, in fact. So what we did 
that uh, uh, we we took these balls uh, to different institutions and wherever i go i always love to talk about this movement and about the beauty of this movement because i i'm very much sure about my movement is that if i talk with 100 people i'm sure that at least one person out of 100 will come will join my movement and the connection of that person is going to strengthen my program because uh, the, the child is with me till he or she is not attaining the age of 18. But what next and what beyond? We all need family. We all need family. I, I miss my mother uh, who passed away last year, in fact, on 28th of September. Yeah. So I can easily understand the pain which they are going through. They have no one to move. They can refer. They can connect themselves. And you need someone. Otherwise, your vulnerability will increase. So we started this movement with Professor Samrat Mukherjee, who's a professor in IIT Delhi, and uh, his wife, uh, Ms. Simanti Mukherjee, in fact, she's a yoga expert. So with their support, we started, and today it has taken a good shape. And a lot many of us, uh, you can say, students pursuing doctorates and master's program, they are the part of this particular Yes, so yes. it is not only restricted within the boundaries, we have gone beyond the boundaries. So anyone who is interested to connect themselves with one child, we encourage that person to come forward and and to carry that particular baton and to carry that particular journey as well in his in their own way. They can take the ownership of the program because we, we never say that only we are responsible or we are changing their life. No, it's in collective responsibility, everyone is doing their bit. This is, yes, this is now the you, you, you also work very closely and hand in hand with the Delhi police and Mr. Kant is a former policeman. Um, and so he's, he's the one who recognized that 32 years ago that something had to be done for these children. So, um, and yes, you yes. have your own legal team uh, on board. Of course. Uh -huh. yeah, so yeah. You're, you, you really do have all of the elements in place to make a difference. Yes. Um, but the thing that I guess you might be needing the most uh, is uh, the funding, right? And, yeah. and that's always an uphill battle. Um, I would think uh, it would be the funding and also um, volunteers, especially from, from the West. People are intrigued by India, and I want them to know that if, if they would like to volunteer, they should contact you at press. We'll give all of, course, of that of information. Course. So, sure, sure. If, you yeah. know, so they can do that and give back. Yes. And there's nothing like dealing with these children face to face, giving them mm -hmm. the love and the attention and the resources, the financial resources as well very true, very true. to make their lives more meaningful and to help you in all the hard work that you do. And I also want to comment on the fact that you, you set up homes for homeless people as well. Yes. And how's all that going? How is that coming along with all of this happening with the COVID too? Well, the homeless people, in fact, it's a, uh, it's a very challenging work. And uh, challenging work in the sense that uh, we are into the services of those people who are on the street from past 10 years, 15 years, and uh, more than that, in fact. Yeah. So many of them, many of them are, uh, are, uh, are the... Uh, are the drug addicts, uh, uh, and uh, it's very difficult to change their life as well. Yeah, I but know. Still, but, but still, uh, I'm, I'm very much grateful to my entire team working on the homeless project that uh, they are taking extra precautions during this particular COVID, uh, you can say, crisis. Sure. And, uh, and we, are, we have taken the responsibilities, we are appealing them, we are encouraging them to because it's very difficult to restrict their movement as well. So we are but, trying that. Yeah, I was just going to say also, I recall a time when I was in Delhi as well. I went with Mr. Kant uh, yeah. to one of the homeless. Yeah. Of course, groups. of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And and what was nice is he, he uh, asked them how they were doing. He took their questions. He tried yeah. to comfort them, to reassure them. And of course, you know, they had lots of concerns as they would. But I believe that they were they were also grateful for that for the opportunity to be taken yes. care of when nobody else was doing anything for them. You know, very we're true. human very first true. again, right? Yes. And that's what you talk about. Yes, yes. So important. Yes, yes. And and so Vishwaji, what what 
would you like to say to people as the most important things that you and Preas and Mr. Khant are addressing and would like to address? Where, where do we go from here, my friends? Uh, in simple words, only the thing which we would like to tell to all of our friends uh, spread across the world, that life is too short. Whatever is possible from your end, if you could bring a little bit of beauty, if you could empower someone's life, yeah, nothing brings that level of satisfaction. It is the biggest satisfaction in your life if you could bring a little bit of a gene in someone's who is living into a darkness. So our entire philosophy is based on this particular theme that we are trying level level best to bring people who are live who are who are who are living behind in fact from darkness to light. So that is the whole philosophy of the organization, and uh, we are working on that philosophy from past 32 years and I'm very much sure the organization is very much sure and I believe this front is, is carrying a firm uh, you can say commitment and as well as firm determination that organization is likely to serve thousands and thousands of people in coming years. Okay, wonderful. And um, you know, uh, there are many, many NGOs that come and go. Yeah. And, uh, and and people raise their eyebrows about some, especially yes. in India, right? There, there's so many things going on. But I want to say personally how I can verify that Prayas is an amazing organization. Oh, you thank know, you. Thank 32 you. years, uh, it, it, it's it's been around and still going strong with dedicated yes. people and helping thousands and thousands of, of destitute children and mm -hmm. those homeless people as well. So oh, sure. if anybody feels so inclined, and I hope that they do, yeah, this, of course. Th their, their contributions are tax deductible. Yes, yes, and, tax deductible. Yes. So I would, I would really encourage you to the best of your ability to make a donation, even a small one. In, yeah, sure. In India, that makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Huge yes, difference. yes. Mm -hmm. So please, folks, do that. Do that for the yes. children, would you? Yeah. And uh, Vishwaji, say hello to your beautiful wife, Shumana. Yeah. And yes, everybody yes. Definitely, else, definitely. Yeah, who may definitely. remember me, and particularly Mr. Kant. Hugs and kisses to everybody. Of course, of course, of course, yeah? of course. Yeah. Hugs and kisses to you as well and to your entire team. And thank you for giving us an honor, in fact. And oh. I hope that all of you are safe at home, taking care of yourself. And let's, uh, it's a small family. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's a family. So it's very natural that uh, I was so much touched, in fact, when I got a call and message from you. So, ha, ha, ha. Well, Danyava, Danyava. Danyava. Huh? <laughs> Take care, my thank love. You. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Bye.